Namaste. So if you've been following our videos, even for a little while, I'm sure you've noticed that I'm pretty happy. And the reason I'm happy is because of my spiritual practices, and especially those spiritual practices that give bliss and happiness. So there are a couple of easy secrets to bliss and happiness. And many of those I'd covered way, way long ago, three years ago, something like that, in the Secret of the Golden Flower series. But there's more. <laughs> well, there's always more, right? But this is really easy. Even if you can't do the Golden Flower technique, there's still a way that you can very easily experience bliss and happiness whenever you want. Now, I got to warn you <laughs> that this is going to change your relationship with happiness. Uh, everybody wants happiness, right? It's a very valuable commodity. People will do almost anything if they think it's going to bring them happiness. Unfortunately, because of a lack of knowledge, the things that they do are those that bring them pain. Well, for example, let's say uh, love relationships, uh, passionate love relationships. Everybody thinks that sex is great and that it's going to bring them happiness, but actually it brings them nothing but suffering. Huh? I mean, maybe there's a few minutes of, of happiness here and there. Uh, or at least what you think is happiness. But if something is going to bring you pain in the future, is it really happiness? See, so the first step in attaining happiness and experiencing bliss is that one must be detached. The other techniques won't work very well. They'll only give temporary and partial results. But if you can be detached, those results can become permanent. So what am I talking about? Detachment means I don't care. I'm not clinging. Huh? I'm not clinging to this body. I'm not clinging to this mind or particular types of thoughts in the mind or particular bodily sensations, or particular relationships with others, or the others themselves. Huh? I'm not clinging to any of that. I'm not clinging to possessions. I'm not clinging to uh, a label like guru or master or <laughs> any of that nonsense. Because why? That is all temporary. That will all go away. And if you become attached, if you become dependent on those things and then they go away, that's going to be suffering. So what's the use of a few drops of so-called happiness if it's only temporary and then when it goes away, as it always will, uh, material happiness always goes away then it causes more suffering and pain than it's worth, really. Why do you think that older people become sometimes very bitter, very cynical about love? Uh -huh. How come they become so uh, negative, actually? Huh? And this can even happen to young people if they're disappointed in love or if they see through some of love's illusion without seeing through the whole illusion. 
See, it's not only the object of love that is temporary and unstable and impermanent, unreliable, false, illusory, and ultimately painful. It's also the subject. Because how can you love unless you're a lover? And see, this is an identity. Now, there is one kind of identity that does lead to happiness, and that is the identity of a sadhu. A sadhaka or sadhu means one who is expert. Expert in what? Self-realization. So self-realization is really the key to happiness, especially permanent happiness. But I know you want to be happy right now, right? Okay. So here's a quick and easy secret before we get too far into the video, because everybody usually tunes out by about seven minutes into the video. <laughs> Only the intelligent people stay and watch the rest of it, because I always save the best for last, right? <laughs> so the secret is called metta. Metta was something taught by the Buddha, a practice. And this practice is very simple. You simply wish all the best to all beings. Uh, I wish all beings would be happy. I wish all beings would be free from want, free from oppression and fear. I wish that all beings would have all their needs food, shelter, clothing, friends, whatever they need. I wish all beings would be happy. I wish all beings would be free. I wish all beings would have the wisdom, the detachment, the yoga, the meditation that brings them to self-realization. I wish all beings wisdom. I wish them all peace. I wish them all happiness. And on and on like this, see. Anything desirable, anything that's really good for them, you should wish for them. Huh? Not specific things like money or families or houses or stuff like that, but general, in general. See, and you can get very creative with this. <laughs> I wish all beings would find the secret of happiness so that they're no longer suffering in this world. Huh? And this is the secret. It's a very simple thing. How does it work? Now, this is where everybody tunes out. <laughs> they don't want to know how it works. No, the, the way it works is very simple. We have to live with our thoughts. So if our thoughts are garbage, then we feel like garbage. If our thoughts are pure and beautiful, we feel pure and beautiful. See, so if we're harboring any anger, if we're harboring any resentment, huh, we should be free of that. And you'll find it actually in the beginning, for most people anyway, there's a certain resistance to wishing others well, uh -huh. especially your enemies. Uh -huh. It's very hard to think of your enemies and say, I wish them to be happy. I wish them to be at peace. <laughs> I wish them to drop their anger. I wish them to drop their evil thoughts. See, but if you can do it, it's so wonderfully liberating. Oh, it's amazing. So this is the thing. In the beginning, you'll find you have a causeless resistance to wishing others well. Well, why should they have what I don't have? Well, stupid. <laughs> the only reason you don't have it is because you don't give it away. <laughs> Happiness is something that increases when you give it. In fact, the origin of happiness is in giving. 
Uh, this is why the Buddha stressed so much giving. And this is why karma yoga is all about giving, giving food, uh, giving offerings to the gods. This is all to fill the mind with noble thoughts. See, so when we think of God, we think of the most beautiful, the most powerful, the most pure, isn't it? These are all the qualities of God, and there are many, many more, of course. But one of the things about God is that God wishes the best for everyone, all beings in the creation. So one should give this same sort of thing back to God and also to others. And when we do this, the mind becomes elevated naturally. See, this is what karma yoga is really all about. Yes, one may give material things, huh? but one should also have good wishes behind that giving. Giving while holding some selfish thoughts like, ha, 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 let me give this thing and get famous. Huh? See, that's not really karma yoga. That's still a materialistic deal. huh? I'll give this and get that. Quid pro quo. But real giving is, I'm not attached to this. I'm not even attached to the giving. I'm attached, if anything, to the thought of, here, you have this and be happy. So this is real giving. So this giving can be multiplied a thousand, a million times. If we sit down, for example, if you're having any trouble in meditation, just begin with a little metta. Huh? I want everybody to be happy. I want everybody to have everything they need. I want everyone to be free from care and anxiety, and etc. Do that for a minute or two. And then you'll find your meditation will go very, very easy. So here's something you can do that makes it even stronger. Huh? And if you do this, you're going to be in so much bliss, <laughs> you won't be able to handle it. Go anywhere where there's people. Now you can be still socially distanced and politically correct and all that. Huh? Just go somewhere where you can see people walking by or driving past or somehow have access to people. And just sit there and think at each individual person. May you be happy. May you realize God. May you get wisdom. May you get everything you need. May you be free from anger and envy and suffering of all kinds, and so on. Just think that at each individual person that goes by. I promise you, within 20 minutes of doing this, you're going to be like drunk with bliss. Huh? <laughs> you're going to have to call a taxi to take you home. <laughs> so this is the secret. And this is why I am so happy. See, this is why... I feel bliss every single day. Why is that? Because on this channel I have, I think it's almost 800 videos now. And each one of them is a thought to all of you that may you attain happiness. May you attain self-realization. May you advance in knowledge and wisdom. May you come to see the right view that will speed your progress in spiritual life. Huh? May you become free from your attachments. May you become free from your ignorance. May you, see, here we go. I'm losing it already. <laughs> May you get to experience the four levels of spiritual realization huh? completely. This is what my thoughts are when I make these videos, you see? So since I live with these thoughts every day, I'm always happy because I don't bear any ill will towards anybody, even my enemies. I mean, I thank my enemies. Huh? <laughs> I thank them because they're so stupid that they run me down in public and therefore they have to take all my bad karma. <laughs> 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Please keep it up. You're doing a great job. <laughs> and of course, my friends get double the benefit because they get not only the good karma that they get by doing these practices that we're talking about, they also get all my good karma. Whatever good karma I'm creating in this life by doing all this sadhana, I do like five or six hours of meditation every day, you know, formal meditation. And then in between that, I'm doing informal meditation. So you're gonna get all that good karma. And then on top of that, you're gonna get the results of your own sadhana. So this is why one should be in a relationship with a self-realized person and yada, yada. You know all that already. <laughs> so may you be happy. May you feel bliss. May you take this seriously and do these practices and taste the beautiful result. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung.